All right, I'm going to discuss example 11 from section 7.2 of our Understanding Basic Statistics textbook, 8th edition. All right, so what do I have going on here? I have X is the red blood cell count um, in millions per cubic millimeter of whole blood. So for healthy females, X is normally distributed with a mean uh, mu of 4.8 and standard deviation 0.3. Okay, so normally distributed, uh, if I were to have a normal distribution, try to draw this, it's a bell-shaped curve. It's kind of a narrow-looking curve because that 0.3 standard deviation is kind of small, so kind of a narrow-looking curve. looks like this, centered on uh, 4.8, all right? And this is the distribution of X, distribution of X, which is the red blood cell counts, okay? So mu equals 4.8, sigma is 0.3. All right, and first thing we wanna do is convert each of the X intervals to Z intervals. So um, what is the Z distribution? Z is our standard normal distribution. It looks like a bell curve, very normal looking bell curve centered on zero, and it has a standard deviation of one, right? So mu is zero, sigma is one for the distribution of Z. So this is our standard normal distribution. And the way we go from a distribution of x to a distribution of z is we use this formula, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Okay, so if I'm going to do part a, where is 4.5 on the distribution of x? It's somewhere below 4.8, right? So it's like down here, uh, 4.5. Okay, um, it looks like the way they've written this is a little strange, but basically it says X is more than 4.5, right? So that's more than over, over this side. All right, so this area over to the uh, right of 4.5. So there's a corresponding 4.5 in this distribution of Z. Okay, we need to figure out where it is. But basically this area that I've marked here in green is exactly the same as this area that I've marked over here in green. All right, and so basically that's what this, this formula will help me figure out. What is this value, this cutoff value, where these two areas are exactly the same on each of these distributions? All right, so the way that I'm gonna solve, solve this, um, let me go ahead and use a different color. So for part A, the way I'm gonna solve this is I'll use this formula, Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma, okay, and X, the value that I'm trying to convert is this 4.5. So, or this 4.5 right here. So I have 4.5, that's the X value. Uh, mu, what is mu? Mu is 4.8, all right, divided by sigma, sigma is 0.3, okay? So what is this? This is negative 0.3 divided by 0.3, okay? Remember to do what you have there in the numerator first. Remember your order of operations. Okay, so do the subtraction, 4.5 minus 4.8, negative 0.3 divided by 0.3, all right, and then that is negative one. Okay, so what's my interval? And I used to have 4.5 uh, less than x, or x is more than 4.5, same thing. Uh, the way I would rewrite this, this is exactly the same as the interval. Instead of 4.5, now I have negative one, same sign. Instead of x, now I have z. Okay, so these two intervals are exactly the same. They're exactly equal to each other, All right? So this is the conversion that they wanted. That's my answer to part A. And it's very similar to part B and C. Basically plug in these different numbers, okay, and figure out what the corresponding Z value is. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Next, they said, all right, well, now let's start with a Z distribution. So let's start with our distribution of Z, which is normally, normally distributed, centered on zero. Okay, the distribution of Z, of Z, uh, of Z. Okay, and then convert that to the distribution of X. So go from Z to X. Uh, so X, remember, is like a, Pretty narrow looking distribution, okay? 
centered on 4.8. Okay, so let's do part uh, D. We have z less than negative 1. Point, uh, negative 1.44. So negative, so here's 0. Negative is over here to the left of 0. Negative 1.44. Okay, and z is less than, so that's this area back here, less than, less than. Okay, and so there is a corresponding cutoff. We have to figure out what is this corresponding cutoff where this area I've marked here in the green is exactly the same as this area over here. Okay, what is this cutoff? To figure that out, remember we did have the formula z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. We can use algebra to rewrite this, right? Multiply both sides by sigma, add mu to both sides, and you get a new formula, x equals z sigma plus mu. It's exactly the same formula, it's just rewritten using algebra, okay? All right, so but this is the formula when I'm given a z value and I want to find an x value. So the way I would do part D, the way I would do part D, I would have this 1.44 I'm trying to convert, so I, let me first let me write my equation. So I have z equals, or x equals z sigma plus mu. All right, so x equals, all right, the z value that I want to convert is negative 1.44, negative 1.44, so let me write that, negative 1.44, that is the z value. Uh, sigma, sigma was 0.3, and mu was 4.8, all right? So I have x equals, I'm going to need a calculator for that, um, negative, negative 1.44 times 0.3 is negative 0.432, okay? Remember your order of operations, you have to do that multiplication first, okay? And then add that to 4.8 and you get x equals 4.368, okay? Which you could round that to one decimal places, basically it's 4.4, all right? Um, so what's this cutoff? This cutoff is 4.4. This value here is 4.4, okay? All right, so my interval, it used to be z less than negative 1.44. The exact same interval is x less than 4.4, right? 4.4 right here. And this is my answer. All right, and then you do part E and F pretty much exactly the same way. Okay, you convert 1.28 and then so whatever that conversion is is less than x and then same thing you convert both these numbers negative 2.25 and negative 1 uh, you convert both those numbers and then x is between both those numbers okay last question here has to do with unusually high unusual observations okay um so let me draw out what, what we have going on here we have a female who has a red blood cell count of 5.9 or higher. So our distribution, right? And these tails, I'm not drawing them that well, but they get closer and closer to zero as we go, okay? So the tails are really thin. So centered, this distribution of red blood cell count is centered on 4.8 and uh, 5.9 is really high, it's up here. All right, so 5.9 or higher, so this tail area that I've, let me use a different color, I'm gonna use a darker color, so this area back here, okay, or even red, let me use red. All right, so what I wanna know is basically, is, is this an unusually high observation? Or in other words, like if, what is this area back here? Is it really, really tiny? Right? If it's really, really tiny, then it's very unlikely that we would have observed an observation that's 5.9 or higher. Okay? So that's what we want to figure out. And we're going to use z values to figure it out. So um, if I were to draw my z distribution, so that this is this remember this blue one is the distribution of x of x. 
and the distribution of z looks a little more centered here and uh, we have zero okay let me try to draw my tails a little nicer so we have getting closer and closer to zero getting closer and closer to zero like this okay so the distribution of z all right and we're going to want to convert this 5.9 to figure out what is the corresponding z value for 5.9 right, let's go ahead and do that first so remember our formula for converting from x to z is z equals x minus mu divided by sigma okay so uh, we have z equals the x value that we want to convert is 5.9 mu is 4.8 uh, sigma is 0.3. Okay, remember your order of operations. You got to do what th what's there in the numerator first, and so that would be 1.1 divided by 0.3. Okay, and I would need a calculator for that. 1.1 divided by 0.3 is 3.67. Okay, so this corresponding number here is 3.67. So this red area over here for the distribution of x is the same as this red area over here for the distribution of z. All right, and our question is, what is that probability? Is it very, is it very unlikely, or is it uh, you know considered more likely, right? Um, well, 3.67 is an extreme z value. Okay, and how do I know that? How do I know that? Well, the empirical rule. That, that's a good start um, to understanding this. The empirical rule says that if we go one standard deviation from the mean, from negative one to one, uh, the distribution, the amount of the distribution that's between negative one and one is 68%. Okay, that's the empirical rule. Then if I go two standard deviations from the mean, two standard deviations from the mean, so from negative two, to positive two. This area here, two standard deviations from the mean. This is 95% of the distribution, two standard deviations from the mean. All right, so very likely we'll observe an observation, two standard deviations from the mean. 95% of all observations are two standard deviations from the mean. If I go three standard deviations from the mean, so uh, let me see, let me use a different color. So three standard deviations from the mean, so from negative three, to positive three. This area I've marked in in light blue is almost the entire distribution. Okay, three standard deviations of the mean is almost the entire distribution. It's 99.7% of the distribution is within three standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so if you're beyond three standard deviations from the mean, like 3.67 is beyond three standard deviations from the mean, well, that's an extremely unlikely observation. All right, that's very unlikely that we would observe a value that high. So that's why it's an unusually high observation. It's beyond three standard deviations to the mean, unusually high. Basically, the probability, this little tiny red probability, I could actually figure out what it is using Excel, um, or if you have a normal distribution table, the table is kind of the old school way of doing it, but Excel would also, you know, figure it out for me a lot quicker and easier. Uh, if I figured out that probability, I bet you it's some number really close to zero, right? And actually, uh, let me just quickly, let's just go to Excel and try to figure out what it is. So um, in Excel, there's this formula equals norm.dist. This is the formula we'll want to use, okay? Um, and it is going to tell us the cumulative probability. Now remember all cumulative probabilities, right? All cumulative probabilities are the probability that X is that number or less. So whenever you're using a table or you're using a formula, um, you always are gonna find the less than probability, this area that I'm marking here in, in light blue. So if I wanna know the more than probability, this red area, Remember, the total probability is 1, okay? So the probability that x is more than 5.9 is going to equal 1, so the total probability, 
minus the probability that x is less than 5.9. So 1 minus this blue probability, the less than probability. Okay. All right. So let's go to Excel. Let me type in, instead of writing norm.dis first, let me write 1 minus norm.dist. Okay, the x value that I want to know is less than 5.9. The mean is 4.8. The standard deviation is 0.3. And cumulative, you will pretty much always write true for the normal distribution. Okay, press enter. You see 0.00012. Whew, that is very, very unlikely. That is really close to zero. So this, this area here, this red area, we just calculated it. This probability is 0 0.00012. Very, very tiny area. Okay. And just, just for argument's sake, uh, this area over here is also uh, 0 0.00012. And if we wanted to show that in Excel, right, I could, instead of using my mean of uh, 4.8, right, I could have used the standard normal distribution instead of the distribution of x. And the way I would do that is I would type in 1 minus norm uh, dot s dot dist. What does s stand for? s stands for the standard normal. Okay, so standard normal. Um, and my z value was 3.67. And then, like I said, tr true. You always will write true for cumulative for normal distributions. And you see you get the same answer. Okay, so that kind of verifies that we calculated our z um, number correctly. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, 5.9 or higher, it's very unlikely. So yes, it is an unusually high observation.